Dogs dethroning the dynasty with a dominant fourth quarter. Nick Saban telling Kirby Smart right after the game, you kicked our bleep in the fourth quarter. George is snapping a 14-year drought against Alabama, a 41-year national championship drought. Kirby Smart won four titles as an assistant at Alabama, now his first natty as a head coach. <clears throat> Bryant McFadden, the former Florida State Seminole and two-time Super Bowl champion, joining us, host of All Things Covered, the podcast with his cousin Patrick Peterson. BMAC, where do you put Kirby Smart right now among the top coaches in the game? We know he's behind Nick Saban, but is there anybody between them? Nah, <clears throat> I think Kirby right now winning that national championship last night, being able to beat his mentor in Nick Saban, Clearly, I'll put Kirby number two right now. And not just about the championship that he's that he won last night, but look at his ability to be one of the best recruiters in college football. I mean, the last few years, the University of Georgia, they've been in the top two, top three of the college landscape when it comes to recruiting. So being able to recruit at a high level, recently winning a national championship and always being in that championship conversation, I think Kirby right now is probably the second best coach in college football. And uh, probably should have two national championships. I know Georgia fans would, would tell us that going back to that 2017 game where they lost to Tua Tungabaloa, Nick Saban, and the Crimson Tide, but they finally get over the hump against Bama. Now, BMAC, going into the season, Nick Saban had never lost to one of his assistants. This season, he lost to two of them. Of course, last night with Kirby, earlier in the season with Jimbo. Now, I'm not going to ask if like the floodgates are opening or anything like that because that's nonsense, but does that tell you that anything has changed with those assistants who are maybe learning to play a little bit against Nick Saban or maybe just learning to, to work the recruiting trails like their mentor? Yeah, a few things have changed, and I want to hit on recruiting because the two coaches that you, you highlighted that had success against Nick Saban, Kirby Smart and Jimbo Fisher, two outstanding coaches when it comes to recruiting. Heck, this season alone, this recruiting year alone, Texas A&M, they're currently one in all of college football when it comes to recruiting. You better believe Georgia, they're right there in the thick of things as well. I think they're either top three or top four. So those two coaches have done a phenomenal job being able to follow the footsteps of Nick Saban. And recently, Jimbo just surpassed Nick Saban, when you look at his recruiting class compared to Alabama's recruiting class as well, and then being able to develop the guys. That has been a huge emphasis for both coaches, uh, Kirby Smart and Jimbo Fisher. Not just getting these top classes into your program, but being able to develop these guys to be able to be the best player that they should and will be. And that has that clearly has been a big time plus for both coaches. Now, both coaches, and now let's see exactly what they have in store for next season because you better believe, especially Jimbo, he will get an opportunity to really show if he can consistently have Coach Saban's number being in the SEC West. And as of right now, it's Bama and Georgia with the best odds to win next year's national championship game. A lot of the reason that many are going to pick Alabama is because the Heisman Trophy winner is coming back. Now, he did throw multiple picks last night for the first time in his career. He, he was without his top two wide receivers. What are some lessons that he can take with him into his sophomore season? I just be a little patient. You know what I mean? It seemed like last night he was trying to press. He was trying to rush to make things happen. It's okay in taking what the defense is giving you. It's okay in taking the check down which is going to the running backs, because when he started throwing to the running backs, Brian Robertson and the crew, uh, he was getting some positive yards, but trying to force the issue down the football field is never a good thing, especially if you're working with a bunch of backups at the pass catching position. So Bryce Young is a talented, talented quarterback. Uh, some of the passes he was able to complete and make last night were professional-like throws. Clearly going into this season in 2022, he has to be uh, the odd, one of the favorites to win the Heisman once again because of the position he's playing and how well he plays that said position. Back-to-back -back Heisman Trophy winners for the Alabama Crimson Tide, but not back-to-back -back national championships because Georgia knocked them off last night. Now, as we look ahead to next season, give us a bold prediction, and you're going to lead us in the direction of a Heisman Trophy candidate that doesn't fit the mold of a regular Heisman Trophy winner. Exactly. I just highlighted Bryce Young winning the Heisman, clearly believing he will be a, a top contender for that award again. But my bold prediction for 2022, Will Anderson 
will bring home the Heisman Award this year. An outstanding football player. I felt like he was the best pass rusher in college football this past year in 2021. I know you had Kayvon Thibodeau. I know you had Aiden Hutchinson. But this guy terrorized opposing offenses and quarterbacks the entire season. Led the, led the nation in sacks, 17 and a half, had over 100 tackles. Get this, Chris. He had 33 and a half tackle for losses. That's unbelievable. Those are video game-like numbers. And somehow, some way, he didn't get an invitation to the Heisman Award this past year. No invite, clearly disrespected by the committee, disrespected by the fans. But get this, my bold prediction, he won't miss this invite this season. If he is healthy, my bold prediction is Will Anderson will be the third straight member from Alabama, from the Crimson Tide, to bring home the Heisman. And just the second defensive player all time, if that happens. I like where your head is at, 30-1 to 1 right now. And I think a lot of people that, that watched that game last night noticed that he was the best player on the field, and maybe we're second-guessing their Heisman votes as, as well. He definitely should have gotten more than he did. Let's uh, get to a team to keep an eye on. So many changes, you know, coaching changes, Brian Kelly going to LSU. So much that you could look to to say, boy, it's going to be interesting to watch these guys. What's the one team yeah, you're going to be keeping an eye on? The team I want to highlight is a team cur currently – they probably won't be ranked in the way too early top 25. They probably won't be ranked in August. But this is a team, based on their schedule and based on the newly hired head coach, I think they will make some noise. And that's Southern California, USC. Uh, Trojans fight on. Hiring Lincoln Riley was a big-time signing because of his ability to recruit and one of the best offensive-minded coaches in college football. You better believe he will have a plan in place for his team, especially on the offensive end. We're already starting to see some of the positives he's bring when it comes to recruiting and potentially transfer Porter as well. But I love SC as a team that could make some noise when you look at their schedule. It's safe to say they probably won't play the, their first ranked opponent until week seven, which is Utah. You travel to Utah, but by then they should definitely have a rhythm in place offensively and defensively that will be causing a lot of terror two Pac-10 opposing defenses, that Pac-12 opposing defenses that they will face. And get this, right now, we don't know who their quarterback will be, Chris. He don't Slovis, he transferred. I think he went to Pitt. We just saw Jackson Dart put his name in the portal. So we don't know who the quarterback will be. But get this, Chris, you better believe Lincoln Riley has something in place because for both quarterbacks to instantly leave town and we're not just talking about they're leaving any town. They're leaving La La Land, Los Angeles. They probably got word that there could be a bad man coming to town very, very soon. And we don't want to be here when that bad man <laughs> gets here. So we don't want to be there when that bad man gets here. I think Lincoln Riley might be trying to make a play for his former quarterback in Caleb Williams. I'm just thinking outside the box. I'm just thinking outside the box. But <laughs> even if they don't get Caleb Williams, I think this is a team that could make some noise. But if they do go get Mr. Caleb Williams, you might as well get ready to print the T-shirt. <laughs> Noise will be made in Los Angeles. Uh, Amanda hates to hear that as a, a Sooner graduate. I just graduate. Tuned, tuned out that entire yeah. segment. Yeah, yeah. It, it, all signs all right. definitely pointing to uh, Caleb Williams reunited with Lincoln Riley there in La La Land. How about a way too early national championship prediction for next season, BMAC? Uh, same song, different day. Way too early prediction, national championship. I'm going chalk, Alabama. The reason why I'm going to Alabama, they have the best quarterback in college football returning. We believe he will be more mature, he will be more experienced. They have some issues that they have to answer, questions they have to answer. You know, replacing arguably the top two pass catchers. We don't know if Mechie, John Mechie will return, but he could leave and go pro. Williams will go pro. But they're returning, slated to return six starters on offense, seven starters on defense. Um, Will Anderson, the best defender in college football, talked about Bryce Young. But look at the portal already. Getting Eli Ricks is a huge, huge plus for them, adding him in the secondary. Getting a uh, running back, Jameer Gibbs from Georgia Tech, was the best running back in the portal as well. And we're starting to see some young pass catchers uh, surface last night. You saw Hall, you saw Holden, you saw Brooks, guys that surfaced when Williams went down with that injury against UGA. You better believe they could be a household name by September by October based on the talent and the potential they have. And oh, by the way, their quarterback is the best in the land in Bryce Young.
I'm already counting down the days to the start of next college football season. BMAC, you got the He's shirt on right now. Done. All things covered. We've got the promo for you. Give us a, a little tease of what's on the very latest All Things Covered podcast. Me and Pat P get ready to highlight the final season. I mean, the final ball game last week, Minnesota. That's a lot to talk about. You know, Black Monday was what yesterday. Coaches getting fired. Uh, we probably will have a special, special guest, special mm. guest joining us. And we don't want to reveal the name just yet, but stay tuned. All right, Brian. Thanks, man. You can hear him on the All Things Covered podcast with Patrick Peterson. Download and follow anywhere you get your audio. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.